Hey hey everyone, it's GP here from the D4H customers team. This video series will cover the end-to-end -end feature set we have in D4H Alerty. This will include how to invite users, how to manage permission profiles in Alerting, how to configure your alerting account settings, and finally sending alerts to your team members in the account. Let's dive in. If you are an account administrator of the operation center account, jump into the admin area. Please note that based on the D4H products that you have purchased, sending invitations will be different. For example, if you only have D4H Alerting and Operation Center, you will need to go to the Collections tab at the top, then open up the Personnel module. From here, you'll have to either add your users manually by clicking into plus add, or else you can import a CSV file using the import option that is shown on your screen. However, if you have D4H Team Manager product and you have configured the D4H products integration, you can jump into the personnel tab on your left and import the members directly from the personnel and training module in our team manager. If you do have D4H personnel module, please double check the contact number that is added to every member's profile. For example, if you go to a member's profile, you'll be able to see the mobile number under the contact details section. And as you can see, it must have the country code followed by the contact number. Do not enter the 00, simply add the mobile number in this format. Failing to do so, system will not bring over the contact number of the member which means you are not going to be able to send out alerts to those members now that you have added all the users to your account simply go into each profile and give them a permission profile based on the actions that you would like them to perform in d4h for example i'm going to go into one of the user profiles and i'm going to click into send invite this will send an invitation to the user based on the email address that I've added. My next step is to give them a permission profile. If you are going to be adding an account owner, you can directly add them from here. But of course, if you are going to be giving custom permissions for the user, expand the additional policies and click into the permission drop down. From here, scroll down to the bottom and you'll be able to see a bunch of alerting permissions at the bottom then take a look at the permissions shown on your screen and start adding the permissions based on your requirement for example if i want someone to send alerts using the d4h alerting product what i would do i would click into send alerts permission profile then click into allow i would add that option and also i would need them to view alerts as well you that option click into add once you have added all the permission levels go to the bottom and click into save this will ensure the user is able to access d4h alerting to send alerts and also to view alerts now let's take a look at how a user can sign up for d4h alerting once an invitation has been sent the user will now receive an email from d4h asking them to sign up Simply open up that email and click into the big orange icon or the button in the middle of the screen or you can use the hyperlink that is shown at the bottom. The system will now take the user through the sign up process. The first step is that system is going to ask you to confirm your email address. And if you would like to stay up to date with our new features, please make sure you check mark that option and then click into sign up. System will now trigger a six digit code to your email address simply copy that six digit code and paste into the enter code text bar then click into next system will now ask you to set up a password for your d4h profile please make sure your password meets the minimum requirements that is shown at the bottom if you're on a single sign-on setup with d4h you will not be asked to create a password instead you'll be directly taken to the D4H products page. 
the system will now ask you to set up two-factor authentication. In D4H, you can set up two-factor authentication via Authenticator mobile application or you can use your mobile SMS as well. We always recommend our users to have two-factor authentication in place because it's going to be adding an extra layer of security when it comes to your access. However, if you don't wish to have two-factor authentication added to your account, you can always skip that option and you can set up the two-factor authentication later on as well. We have a variety of videos on two-factor authentication in our help center and if you're having any difficulty or if you would like to know more information about two-factor authentication, please check out the videos and the help articles we have in our help center. In the next step, system is going to check whether you have access to any other D4H products. If you don't have access to any other D4H product, we can simply skip this step and click into next. The system gives you a confirmation and you can click into the hyperlink over here to access the D4H alerting product. Finally, the system is going to take you to the alerting product. Here, you'll be able to see and access certain features in the product based on the permissions that you have been granted. Now I'm going to hand over the video to my team who will give you more details about some of the cool features we have in D4H Alerting. As always, thank you for your time and I'll see you on another video. G'day folks, Pat here from D4H with a short video on configuring general settings in alerting. We want to be able to personalize the sender identification from your alert so that the system can clearly communicate to the people being alerted where the alert is coming from. So to access those settings, click on your profile in the top right corner and choose the admin area. And in the admin area under alerting general settings, you'll see we have three options. The short text identifier will be used in communications such as text messages. So it's important to have something short and easily readable. The long text identifier can clearly identify the full name of the organization. And then finally, the text to voice identifier I put in D4H OEM separated by periods. This is to ensure the system does not try to say it as a single word, but rather understands that it is an acronym and will uh, say D4H OEM to the person being notified. With alerts, it's vital to define the urgency levels and trigger our alerts through the appropriate channels depending on the severity of the incident. For example, if it's for information, it can wait a day or two until folks read our emails. But if it's critical, we need to leverage every channel available ASAP. Whether that's voice, SMS, email, or WhatsApp messaging to make sure we get a response as soon as possible. To manage alert settings, you must have that permission configured under additional policies. And to receive alerts, it's vital that the person will have the correct phone number and email addresses configured on their profile. To configure those alert severities, go to the admin area in your D4H site, select severities under alerting, and add a new severity. So we're gonna call this a critical incident. We can choose an icon appropriate to the incident type. We can select an appropriate color depending on the incident. And we can choose which channels we want to deliver the notification through because this is a critical event. I'm going to select all of them, simply save. And now we have our alert severity saved here as a critical incident. You can access the alert template settings from the admin area in your D4H account. From here, we can click into templates, and here we can see we have the different templates that are pre-created. To help you understand how these work, I'm going to create a new template using the red button here in the top right-hand corner. We can create a give our template a name. So in this case, I'm going to say it's a flooding incident. We can give it a description to explain to the team when they should use this alert. We can select a sending mode. We have two options here. The user can instantly send the alert as it is with no changes, or they can use an edit before send option, which will allow them to make changes to certain fields within the alert before they press send. We can select to stop accepting responses after a selected time frame because we don't want our responders to respond to events which are no longer active or current notification. On call only will filter to people who are set to on call right now 
or we can filter it by group, or we can select individual people from this option here. We can select an alert severity, so we've got different options here configured, and they're configured in the severities options here, which is covered in a different video. I'm gonna call this critical, and then we can say our alert message. Finally, we choose the response options. So the first response I'm gonna say here is on the way, another might be delayed to attend. Once we have those created, we click save. Now that's saved our new template into the template section, we can see that some of the templates can be pinned. This means they will appear on the top of the page and be quickly accessible for people who are sending these alerts. If they are less frequently used, they should be moved down into the other templates area. In our alerting account, we can see now we've got our alerts here. So I've created my flooding alert, which I can select and quickly send to my team and make changes to it if I need to in the actual incident. Hey everyone, Marie Hunt here with D4H. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to send alerts from your alerting account. Once you've logged in to your Operations Center account and then selected the bullseye on the left-hand side menu, go ahead and click either New Custom Alert at the top right to create a brand new alert, or you can select from one of the alert templates that you've already created. For steps on how to create alert templates, go ahead and see the other video that we have in this series. When you select New Custom Alert at the top right-hand corner, this gives you the ability to customize the alert any way you see fit. The first thing that I'll do is I'll select the recipients for this alert. From this pop-up of recipients, you have the opportunity to search for specific names. You may also select any of the groups that you have. And if you have personnel and training as well, you can select On Call Now and this would pull in from the On Call Now planner from personnel and training. Once you've selected the recipients for your alert, go ahead and click select at the bottom. Select your alert severity. Type in your message. Now that you've customized your alert text, go ahead and navigate down to the response options. This allows you to customize those response options for your recipients. Note that if you do not have the add response option, go ahead and check with your D4H administrator. Next, select under advanced. This gives you the ability to stop accepting responses within a certain time period. Once your alert is ready to go, go ahead and click send alert. And then click send. Next, let's take a look at how to send an alert with a alert template that you've already created in your account. I'm gonna navigate back to the alert section. This time under new alert, I'm gonna select the all team call out, which is the template that has already been created. Since this template has the option to edit it before I send it, I can customize the message further, add in more recipients, more responses before I hit the send alert. And then once I'm done updating the text alert, the response options, or any of the other information within this alert, I'm gonna select send alert and then send again. Hi again, Marie Hunt with the D4H Customers team. In this video, we're going to take a look at the recipient's responses as well as your audit trail within your D4H alerting account. Once you've logged into your operations center and selected the bullseye icon on the left-hand side menu to navigate to your alerting account, go down to send alerts to review any of the alert responses and the full audit trail of those alerts. For this video, I'm going to select this first alert that was sent today. From here, I can see that there was one recipient and one response received. If I wanted to dive in further, I could select the response option by clicking on that carrot icon on the left, and then you could see the recipient and how they responded. The information in this alert will also display the average response time and whether your responses are still open. If I wanted to see the full audit trail for each recipient, I can select their name under their applicable response. In the event you've received all of the alert responses that you need, you can stop accepting alert responses. Navigate to the three dots at the top right hand corner and select stop accepting responses. 
then click stop. This essentially closes the alert, not allowing for any additional responses to be received. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this alerting video series. For other videos, check out our YouTube channel, or if you have any questions or feedback for us, please reach out to help at d4h.com. Bye for now.